Welcome to another OSWE guide video. Today we'll be focusing on Java and decompiling Java. So I'm using the hack the box box blocky as an example, since it gives a nice framework for us to work around. So like any hack the box box, we want to go ahead and run some kind of MMAP scan, some kind of port enumeration. We can see there's port 80 open. I'm not going to do the whole process uh, to save time, but basically we have port 80 open. We've run a go buster and we've seen there's a plugins folder. Within the plugins folder, uh, I think let's go to it. We should have two files. A blocky core.jar and a group protection something something.jar. I'm going to go ahead and download both. Same thing as, save to blocky. And this one I'm going to uh, do the same. Yeah, okay. Now, if I go ahead and um, go here, I should be able to view this in the folder. If I then go to open with ngrampa archive manager, we can see what it's built up of. Now, Use your jar files, you want to basically be able to read the actual code inside. And you can't really do that with um with, with this case because see these are classes, right? We have we can we can read this mcmod.info, but we can't read the internal data. So for example, um in our in grandpa, so we have say uh ME, we go to here, let's take the first file site PI, go to Truth protection API .class. If we go ahead and read that, it's not going to work. Basically, it's binary data. So that isn't going to work. Um, so what we need to go ahead and do is use another tool called JD GUI. Or we can use JAD. So I'm going to go ahead and show um, JD GUI first. JD GUI. So JD GUI doesn't take any arguments. Um, at least not that I'm aware of. You can't tend to take, you can't tend to give what path you want. I'm going to go ahead and look at the group protection.jar and we're going to go ahead and look at the same file. So really what I want you to understand is that a Java file, you can read it in our, as an archive, but to read the contents of the archive, it wasn't going to work. So if we look at the API, go to group protection class, we can see the contents there, right? And that all looks fine. You know, th this is in plain text English. We can read it. Now, if we do the same, uh, except this time we open up a new terminal, go code, um, group protection, um, Actually, we might need to, um, what I'm going to do actually, I'm going to just go into here. I'm going to go ahead and extract that to the local directory. Okay, now we should have it in there. Yep, cool. Code grief protection dot class. Cool. Um, API dot class. Now, this isn't going to be readable. So look, the file is not displayed in the editor because it is either binary or uses unsupported text encoding. Basically, what that means is the data itself isn't readable. But if we open it in JD GUI, it is readable. See group protection API.class. Group protection API.class. This isn't readable. Yeah, there are some static strings in there you can read, but it isn't readable. Whereas in JD GUI, it is readable. So that's why we use JD GUI. Now, let's say we want to read the contents of what we can see in JD GUI, but in VS Code. Well, we, there's two ways to do that, really, uh, or multiple ways, but I'm going to show you two ways. So the first way is to use a tool called JAD. And basically JAD does what JD GUI does, um, but it will just uh, take the, the raw file. So in my case, I'm gonna go, um, I'm gonna CD two directories, not CD, and then run tooling, JAD, and then the name of the file in our case, it is called group protection API.class. Cool, and now if I go to code and then go to the same thing, api.jad, we now have the plain text, you can see it's the same. So if we look here, we have say like import Java view to optional and public interface grief prevention. And then here's the JAD file, we have the same. So basically we can use JAD to decompile. Now that isn't so much taught in the OSWE course um, because to be honest, it's um, it, it, it just isn't uh, the, the chosen tool. Maybe it is, I don't actually recall. But what is taught is JD GUI. And JD GUI can basically do the same, but to the whole, to the whole thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, go to file, save all sources. Save it as this. And now, if we look into XT, if we now if we open it in XTG, um, to the grief protection .zip, and we go to the same path in the same directory API, we can now see that this is a Java file. And if we look at the previous one, that's a Java file, and this one was a class file. I can see. So this one .jar .source .source .zip is a Java file. And this one here is a class file. This isn't readable, and this one is readable. So that's why it's important to do, you know, the Java decompilation using JD GUI or JAD or whatever. So let's look into JD GUI a little bit more because JD GUI, it looks a little bit old, but it's powerful in the sense that it can give you a rough feeling. 
so for me, for example, um, I may want to look at, you know, what's working in a certain, um, you know, a certain class or whatever. So let's say I, I look at, I don't know, command. And now command's got a bunch of classes. Um, and if I open this here, we can see there's a class base command. And then within there, there's just some state, some strings, basically, um, just fields or whatever. Um, maybe I can find another one uh, that has some functions that we can refer to. Um, yeah, we have an in, we have uh, an interface implement there. Trying to find an example where there might be a function that is used. Okay. Um, doesn't seem to have any immediately available to us right now. Um, but the point is, if we can find one that does, we're going to have basically a different list of all the available functions. Now, as an extension to this, um, and now of course I could just show you the blocky um, file. The blocky file is actually the, the is it the next stage in owning the box, but I don't care too much about owning the box. I care more about understanding how this works. So I want to show you the, this MSF thing. So MSF Venom, what we can do here is maybe not that one. Uh, MSF Venom, um, I want a Java one I might even have. Um, maybe it's not in this one. I should have some history for Java. Okay, so here we have a um, a Java interpreter reverse shell, and I'm going to tell it to output shell dot two shell two dot jar. Now, this this is this is going to be used as an attack um, as a payload. So we can see it, we can file it. So file shell two dot jar. It tells us it's a zip archive data, even though it's a dot jar, and we can view it. If I go ahead and try and um, like CTA open it. I use XCG because it kind of just handles opening files or whatever for us. If it's an image, it opens it in an image viewer and it makes life easier. We can see here in the web int, we have web.xml, we have classes, and then we have a metasploit.dat, and then we have these payload.classes. Now we can't view those, right? They're not they're not viewable, but I want to view them. So I have two options. I can use JAD or I can use JDGUI. I'm going to use JDGUI because it's just a little bit cleaner and it'll show us the point I was trying to make before. So go to file, open. Go to the shell two dot jar. Go to web in, and this gives us a rough insight as to how how this works. So this is a Java file, right? And it's using it's a web uh, a web based Java file. So the first thing it will read is the web.xml, and the web.xml basically defines a serverlet name. Then when that serverlet name is called on the root, so basically like the root of the web server, it will then call metasploit.payload servlet, and that is here. Payload servlet here, so metasploit. We have um, metasploit dot payload, which is basically metasploit dot payload. Um, and then we can see here that we have basically some Java that simply handles. We have a class here. Now, if we click here, we have a payload servlet. And if we look down here, we have under there we have all the relevant um, methods that it uses. So, for example, we have a payload servlet. So when this first thing runs, um, initially upon run. We're going to have uh, this run payload.main. I can go ahead and click this, and it will take me to where that runs. And then when payload main runs, the first thing that runs is payload.main, which is here. And then that runs as standard. Now, I find this a little bit hard to read. I mean, yes, you have uh, the ability to jump from bit to bit, but I find this a little bit hard to read. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is I'm going to go and save sources to here. Go ahead and create a new directory. Make the out cp the shell two dot jar dot source two out just so it's a little bit cleaner and then um, i'm going to go ahead and unzip okay and then go open it up in code you know and close my current code <clears throat> and now we can see when it loads the contents we saw before we have web.inf classes and web.xml all right sweet so we have web.xml we saw this before and there's some syntax highlighting which is a little bit nicer and we have obviously metaplate and we have those two uh Java files that were class files before, because we have saved it, saved the sources, we now have access to the raw Java. I mean, now we can have a much better look, you know, um, we can look for certain things. So for example, let's say I'm looking for all cases where there's a file in there, um, go to file, go to say the word file, there's a million, you know, there's 111 results. Okay. One thing I find super helpful is if I were to go to uh, not replace all, <laughs> if I go to this button here, and then I can, uh, then tell it what files to include or not, and then open in editor. Now, interesting actually, in open in editor, it's going to give me the first one line. So, this is the this is the first example where a file appears. Second example, if I now change this to say two, it now gives us every second line where it appears. So it gives us say like uh, try and find an example where it's on its own. 
I'm going to give it, say, 10. Um, I guess it's because they're quite close together. But the point I'm trying to make is we can use VS Code basically to say, hey, give me the first, give me this line, and then the 10 subsequent lines after that appears. Maybe if I try looking for, um, I don't know, IO within there, it's then going to give us uh, all the cases where IO appears close to file, which is very cool because what we're doing is we're grepping, we're effectively grepping file, and then within there, we're then grepping for IO. If I then remove this, we're basically going to get the normal the normal output, um, at least we should do if I hit enter here. Um, and I open in editor that refreshes it, yeah. So basically, we have like, um, say I'm looking for create temp file. Oh. Um, also, double clicking, it takes you there. <laughs> That's not where I want to do though. Go over here, and now we can search for that. And now within the contents, the output of this, we can then search for all cases where file existed before and then create temp file existed afterwards, which is just awesome. Okay, so just to summarize, um, basically what we can do is we can take a, a jar file and we can't read a jar file because it's basically binary. But what, what we can do is we can use um, we can use JDGUI to open the file and then save as all sources. I'll show you that real quick again, JDGUI. Yeah. If I can spell right, yeah. Uh, take a file, for example, um, blocky.co. You can view the contents of that file in our case, we have blocky called a class. We have a password, which is awesome. We can go ahead and go to save all sources. But then when we save all sources, we can then read the contents in plain text in, say, VS Code. And we can do the same with JADX as well by simply just passing it the, the folder of jar files, uh, not jar files, class files. So hopefully this gives a, uh, a nice little intro to JDGUI and just a little bit more insight. The video was longer than I was hoping it was going to be, but that's not a problem. Um, as long as I provided some value. But yeah, I'm going to leave it there, and hopefully this serves helpful and uh, gets you a little bit further ahead to your OSWE. Thanks everyone. Like, comment, subscribe. Catch you in the next one. Bye.